Hey guys, welcome back. I want to do a real quick video here. Um, I did a live stream a long, long time ago. Uh, it's been over a year, I think. Um, and I was rebuilding the rear end on my Chevy Astro van. And Keith DeFazio asked why I wasn't using a hot plate to put the bearings on. So, I didn't have a hot plate. I bought a hot plate. And I don't use it as often as I'd like. It's just kind of a pain to set up for me. Um, takes up some space. And then I remembered that I have another way of doing it. And it, it all came with some research. Um, someone else asked why I don't use a inductive bearing heater. And I looked online and they're $5,000. And I'm thinking, well, that's why. Because um, I'm not going to spend $5,000 on an inductive bearing heater. But I do have a inductive heater for nuts and bolts. And this is the mini ductor. And what I bought for this thing a while back was... Um, this flat plate for removing decals off of vehicles. Um, it didn't work great for that. It's really, really, you know, you have to be very careful not to overheat the paint, and I'm always worried about overheating the paint, so I don't use it for that. But it does work good for bearings. And there's a few things we have to watch out for um, when doing this. You don't want to overheat the bearing. You don't want to distemper it, um, mess with the metallurgy of the bearing at all. I think that happens you know, probably 250 degrees and up, maybe a lot higher than that. But typically, I don't have to go much higher than 200 degrees to be able to assemble everything how I want to. So what I use is my thermal imager, um, just because it's easy to see what's going on. Now, this little plate is going to heat up metal things on both sides of it. So let me show, let me flip the camera around and I'll show you what we're working with. And I'll show you how easily it works. So if I were to lay this flat on the bench and put the bearing on top of it like you would normally do for an inductive cook top or even a hot plate, um, normally you're gonna be you know, putting some water or something and boiling it. But with this pad, um, it's gonna heat up the bench. Now this is a metal top on top of, or metal covering on top of a wood bench. So that could be bad. Um, we don't wanna burn our bench down or the shop down. So that's not gonna work. But if I just flip this over, and lay this on top of it, I can easily heat that up. Now, I'll grab the thermal imager and just to show you guys what's going on. So sometimes it's a little hard to see the temperature of reflective surfaces. Um, the shiny metal, you know, messes with it a bit. But, you know, we're at a range of 78 to 100 degrees. Now, this is not 100 degrees right now. As you can see, my hand is 95, but the spot that it's saying is 100 degrees is just reflection off the bearing messing with the image. If I throw the mini doctor over that, now I should be far enough away from the bench that I'm not gonna superheat the bench. And you can see that it's still fairly cold. I covered up that reflective surface and we're at 90 degrees. So let me go ahead and pull the trigger on it. Now in the manual it says that the mini doctor shouldn't be run for more than like 15 or 20 seconds at a time. Um, this will require a little more time than that. So if it you know, shuts off or anything, you might have to recycle it, but I've never had an issue with it shutting down on me or overheating. So I'm now pulling the trigger, and we are going to see that to start heating up. Uh, we can see that inductive ring heating up, and if I pull this away, you know, the bearing is warming up. Now, it does look like we are getting a little bit of heat built up on the bearing cage, but from my experience so far, um, I've done several of these, and I haven't had an issue. So I want to keep checking it because I don't want to heat that bearing up much over 200 degrees um, the inductive plate or the uh, pad here will probably get hotter than that um, normally I see about 220 230 by the time the bearing gets up to that 200 degree temperature and what this is doing is that it, when it heats up it expands that bearing and allows it to slip onto the pinion um, this is a pinion bearing an outer one which normally you would do it on the inner bearing Let's see what we're at there, 200. And I'll, I'll have to heat it a few more times um, when we're ready to uh, slap it on the vehicle. Most guys don't heat up the outer pinion bearing, but sometimes it's very difficult to get this bearing onto the pinion because you know you have to. This has to be pressed on in the vehicle, so you're like trying to beat it on there 
or sometimes you have enough thread to get the yoke started or you can stack some washers and try to force it together but if we preheat heat this bearing i can put this pinion into this rear differential housing and then heat this up and quickly grab it with a rag or a leather glove and slap it on there and it'll go most of the way onto this pinion and then i can uh i can run it the rest of the way with the pinion nut but that's going to save me a bunch of headache and a bunch of hassle by doing that one. I put this big bearing on the same way. Heated it up about 200 degrees, it dropped right on. Um, I had some cones already ready to tap on the inner part of the race and smack that in, make sure it's fully seated, but it went all the way to the bottom, no issues at all. So I'm gonna heat that up, we're gonna slap it in the vehicle and call it good to go. Okay, so this bearing is hot. The bearing didn't go quite as far as I wanted that time, um, you know, trying to make sure I was in the camera. I had a slight delay, uh, so I may knock it back out of there and get it on. But it did go on far enough that I could get the pinion flange on, get the nut started, and not have to ride that struggle. But um, it'll be easy for me to knock the pinion back out. I'll heat it up a little bit more and slap it together. I, I got it to about a 200 degrees, um, but by the time I grabbed it with the rag, I need to get a leather glove on so it's a little faster, got it put together, it cooled down, and as soon as it touches that pinion, um, it cools down very quickly and shrinks onto it. So I hope you guys found that video helpful. Um, I'm using the, the mini ductor. Um, it's a little less expensive than the regular ductor, but, or this is the mini ductor Venom. I think the other one's a mini ductor too. So I'll post both of them in the description. Um, I haven't had an issue with this one. I think the other one is a little tougher and probably has a little you know longer life but for occasional users this works fine thanks for watching see you next time